This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is F1, or Formula One 2020 by Codemasters. This is the 11th version of the title in the series by Codemasters, and the only official Formula One title that bears their name available to the sim racing world. This year's version of Formula One 2020 features the real 2020 lineup of cars, liveries, drivers, and tracks of the real-life Formula One 2020 season. F1 2020 also features Formula Two cars and a handful of vintage cars to drive as well. The 2020 version of F1 has a newly designed career mode that will allow players to design their own drivers, create their own teams. That means you're going to pick your own sponsors. You're going to hire your teammate and other employees of the team. You will also manage your facility and control the development of your team as you run your 10 year long career. You. You are in control as you strive for greatness at F1 2020. Now, in addition to the revamped career mode, F1 2020 has also seen improvements in the graphics, the physics, the user interface, as well as a few other tweaks in the 11-year-old title. Now, when you fire up F1 2020 for the first time, you have the ability to run solo and race in any conditions that you want to set. You can go on to multiplayer and race others or compete in online challenges. There are also areas for F1 eSport news, areas to customize your assets, view the cars in showroom conditions, or the theater for your replays. But the main focus of F1 2020 is the career mode, and that is accessed through the main homepage along with the store, mail, calendar, split screen, assists, and other game options. To prepare for this review, I really want to try out everything that F1 2020 had to offer. That means I dove into the career mode. I wanted to get a good taste for what it was like to develop the team, make those upgrades, start out as a back marker in the grid, and work my way forward through a matter of driver skill and development through the team. And just in my testing, I can tell you it's a very, very extensive career. In addition to that, I wanted to do enough solo racing where I could put any conditions that I want, try every different track, try a variety of different car makes to get a feel for the differences between all of the cars, as well as checking different conditions like time of day and weather. It would also give me the ability to really test the AI at different levels to find out exactly where I fit on the grid. I did a bit of multiplayer racing to get a taste of the matchmaking system. I also want to see the weekly challenges and see the kind of things that would inspire you to continue on playing in the game. So if you follow us at Twitch, you know that a lot of the testing that I did for The Sim was done live at Sim Pit Live on Twitch, and all of that is there. But for this review, I just wanted to keep it simple. I wanted to break it down category by category, the things that really make up a Sim, so that you could it would be very crystal clear my feelings on each component of the Sim. So let's start things off with graphics, which for the gaming community, quite honestly, is probably one of the most important categories when it comes to making up a game, let alone a sim racing title. So the graphics in F1 2020, they are very good. They're crisp. They run strong and they have great replays. The graphics are very clear and they also give you a good sense of speed while driving. The definition of the cockpits is also very good, including the hands and their movement on the wheel. Each car being unique gives you a good feeling of actually being in each particular make. The weather effects are also very good. The water on the visor, the rooster tails off the cars, and terrible conditions when trailing other cars really add to the immersion and the level of graphics within F1 2020. There are also added extras giving life to the graphics. Sparks off the bottom of the car, waving flags and banners in the stands, moving corner workers, and moving crowds. And then there's something that I think Codemasters did better than, quite honestly, anybody in all of sim racing, and that's the ability to adjust your heads-up display. Now, you're not going to find this in the normal options. You're only going to find this in the driving options while in a session and you hit the pause menu and then go make adjustments to your heads up display. But what they've done is they've given you the ability to take any of the information on the screen and put it anywhere you like. For people on triple screens, instead of all of the information being at the very borders of your screens, you can now bring it into the middle and not only put it where you want, but size it to the size that you want and even adjust the transparency. I gotta tell you, 
Every sim company out there needs to take note of what Codemasters has done with the heads up display, because this is a must. This is something that should be added to every sim out there, quite honestly. Now, with that said, everything I've talked about in the graphics department has been very good. It's a solid game when it comes to the graphics, but there are a few things that hardcore sim racers are still demanding and not featured within F1 2020. So despite having the ability to run in triple screens, despite having the ability, ability to actually adjust my field of view, I still don't have that triple screen support that people want. The ability to actually adjust the angles and change the distortion so that you can get that really perfect in the car feel. But I will say the triple screens run well. It does look good. It's just not that level that hardcore sim racer really demand. And then the next thing really comes VR. No VR. So many of you out there are saying no VR, no buy. And in the case of F1 2020, there is still no VR. And that's something that I also think is a must for modern sims at this point. Now let's talk about the sounds in F1 2020. Overall, the sounds are okay. They're not great. They're not bad. There are things that I think could be better. Overall, they have a slight digitized sound to them. Overall, I think they're a little on the wimpy side. I'd like a little bit more raunchy, nasty sound on a Formula One car. And on the other hand, there are effects that are actually really cool. Like when you hit your DRS button and the wing goes down and you actually hear it audibly, you hear a difference and you know that it's engaged the DRS. There are also echo effects that are really good when you get near walls or things that would reverberate the sound and you hear those quite clearly. So I'm not going to really call the sounds one of the best features or the worst features of the game. They're rather adequate or okay. And now on to the physics. And you know this is going to be one of the most debated topics when it comes to reviewing any sim. And I think F1 2020 might be one of those greatest argument sims there is out there because it really comes down to two things. What market were they looking for when making the game? And then secondly, what are you as a sim racing looking for out of a racing title? So let's talk about F1 2020. Overall, the physics are medium. I, this is a fine line between a hardcore sim and a total game. And there are reasons I think they had to walk a fine line between it. So you end up with physics that are both good and bad. I mean, the car's handling model overall is in the direction that you would expect from a proper sim. You've got understeer effect, you've got oversteer effect, you've got throttle affecting your steering, you've got brake and brake lockup affecting your entry, causing understeer with too much braking, causing oversteer with too much throttle. These are the things you would expect from any sim, and then depending on the type of car, to what degree these things would happen. Now, a Formula One car is the epitome of driving on that fine edge, where the moment you've lost track Action, you've probably got gone too far. Formula Ones are not known for their drifting. However, in Formula One 2020, you have a good and bad or a variety, a mix between the hardcore elements that sim racers are going to appreciate and gamers are going to be able to drive. When you drive without traction control, there is throttle oversteer, and it's to the point that you can send the car all the way around. You are not being helped much by the sim, other than its somewhat endless grip. And that is even more the case when driving in the rain. The car actually becomes rather difficult to drive without traction control and ABS and other things helping you drive. When you drive it like a hardcore sim and you have the settings turned off, you're going to see other things that you expect from a high-end sim, like front inside wheel lockup when pushing it too hard and entering corners. Very sim proper. Wet weather grip is reduced. It's easier to lock up. It's easier to spin. It's easier to get no traction whatsoever into corners that are missed. The different tire compounds result in drastically different lap times and the setup changes have a good effect on handling and lap times as well. And that directly takes us into force feedback because physics and force feedback end up somewhat tied together. Now the force feedback is where Codemasters F1 2020 shows its true gaming colors. 
the force feedback is driven by a very heavy center spring. It's hard to avoid, and that center spring ends up muting a lot of the sensations that are actually happening within the force feedback of the game. There are very subtle effects to over and under steer, but it took me a long while to sensitize enough to actually feel them when comparing it to other sims. There are good curbing and rumble strip effects, and the wheel feels very locked with the game. There is no lag, and it always had that one-to-one -one feel when I had my wheel set at 360. And other things are a little aggravating, like when you drive off into the grass, that it virtually feels the same as being on the asphalt. Overall, the force feedback is usable, but it definitely needs improvement. Devin had mentioned that on the TSPC Racer, it was somewhat spongy, but sufficient. I really would have liked to have seen stronger force feedback effects. Not that center spring, but the actual effects going on when the, with the game while driving. I would like to have seen more adjustability to the force feedback as well, giving me the ability to actually crank up like the off track effects and other things. And it would especially make hardcore sim racers that much more happy. So let's talk about the car models. The car models is one of those areas where you have to really pat F1 2020 on the back. They've done a brilliant job of modeling the Formula One cars and they're highly accurate to the time that they made them. They have great details. Each car has its own steering wheel. Each car has different wings, different noses, and other fine details unique to each car mark. And in addition to that, you've got the Formula Two cars as well as the old school cars through a variety of different years, adding to the driving experience of the game. Now let's talk about the tracks within F1 2020. And again, this is one of the highlights of the game. As the official Formula One game, it means it has the entire lineup of the 2020 season. That means 22 different tracks for you to drive on, four of them having shorter variations, which is a really good combination, and they are done in really nice detail. Now, they're not laser scanned. This is not that millimeter of perfection, but they are highly accurate, and for the most part, they're branded as they would be for a real Formula One weekend with a few exceptions. Other things that we covered when talking about the tracks were covered in graphics. We're talking about all the waving fans, the waving banners, the crowds, the corner workers, the moving replay cameras, etc. There are subtle details off the track as well, like gravel pits, embankments. It's not just flat or simplistic. It's beautiful, the tracks are beautiful, and it's really well done. And now let's talk about the UI or the user interface. And, and I have to admit, this is an area that I have found frustration with the F120, well, with the F1 series for many, many years. There's always been a buggy thing about being a PC user, especially when it came to the user interface with the Formula One franchise. However, with F1 2020, this is the best user interface that they've ever had. It is clean, it is simple, and my keyboard controls actually work. I found that right from the beginning, I could actually navigate properly actually get to different menus and not be searching for phantom buttons or keys or things like that to actually get through the sim. And that meant it actually had a fighting chance of me wanting to come back and play it over and over and over again. The layout is simple, it's easy to follow, and considering the amount of different racing types that you can actually do, it's pretty well done and easy to navigate. Also included in the user interface would be elements of the career mode and the management of your team's operation. This is also fairly easy to follow along with, even for a novice to the title for the first time playing. With F1 2020 really falling into that category of a Simcade type title, it actually means that there is even more focus on the AI, the artificial intelligence, than there would be on certain other Sims, especially when pursuing the career mode. Now the AI in F1 2020 are actually really good. Some of the best AI that you're gonna race against. Now of course, I've yet to find a sim where the AI aren't plagued by being bullied. Sure, you can cut off your opponents, you can kind of run them off the track, and they will just kind of take it because they have to. However, the moment you start to race properly, the moment you start to follow or turn up those penalty levels, you actually have to be pretty accountable. If you just run into your AI, you will be docked heavily and it forces you to race clean. 
when you race clean, the AI actually start to race you fairly hard. They will make passes. They will do their best to keep you behind them. And they will also race each other, which is a great thing to see. It also holds true to F1 for the most part. And you sort of have that parade of teams in order of performance. Another great feature of the AI is the adjustability in their talent level. The game goes all the way from zero or very easy, where just about anybody could probably win a race, all the way up to 110 or ultimate as they call it, which is way, way beyond my talent level. I found myself running 80, 85, maybe 90% if I was really practiced for a race. Now let's talk about the career mode in F1 2020. And the career mode, again, is one of the most important things when you think about a Simcade title. And in the case of F1 2020, I think they've created something pretty good. It's very deep, it's very detailed, and it's gonna take you a very long time to actually finish the career mode if you have the patience. For hardcore sim racers, I think it adds a new element. It gives you that team management aspect that you don't find in a hardcore sim, and it actually turns it into a different type of a game. Again, if you have the kind of patience to finish races, increase your money, increase your sponsors, improve your car, and actually move forward. I think for the gaming audience, for the people who are looking more of an arcade sim, I think the same thing. It adds a good team management, but it is a very difficult sim. Even with all of the settings turned to the easiest, it's still difficult to drive cars at these speeds unless you have really good knowledge of the track layout and what the car can actually do. So despite being on the arcade side, I think it is very difficult for certain people. Certain aspects of the career mode are carried over from previous versions. Things like media days that can actually affect your standing within the series. Development mode can actually affect your team's abilities. You will go from the bottom to the top if you perform well. And it's nice being the new team on the Formula One lineup, which can seem kind of stale throughout the years. Now let's talk about fun factor. I think for real life Formula One fans, the fun factor is actually through the roof. I mean, this really is a little bit of living the life as a driver, as a team manager or owner in the real life Formula One series. And that makes it a lot of fun for those type of fans. I think for non-racing fans, the game ends up being a little bit repetitive and they might not find it all that much fun unless they're really into Formula One or into sim racing. Now with that said, you do have things that carry on the fun beyond just the development of your team, beyond the cool intro and outro scenes, winning races and all that good stuff, but you have your weekly challenges within the multiplayer section. You also have your mini challenges. Your team is always setting little goals, little challenges within the race weekend that you need to perform and pursue as well. So that gives it a little extra fun factor as well. But it's real appeal is that living the life. It's really about being part of Formula One and doing exactly what they do for 22 different weekends. Adding to the fun factor are things like authentic Formula One race weekends with tire management, three practices, qualifying, and the race, and as strict a rule book as you want to play with. Now let's talk about damage. Again, we've clearly identified F1 2020 as a Simcade type title. I've also told you that it is very difficult to drive. I mean, the cars are really fast. You need to know the track and the boundaries are light and they're trying to make a game that is built for everybody. So when you compare it to a hardcore sim, the damage is quite honestly weak sauce. But if they made it any harder, I think it would really make it only for elitist crowd and that's not what they're going for, and I don't think it's who they're marketing the game for as well. You do have cool aspects when it comes to the damage. The wings, the front wings, can be broken into a billion little pieces. You can lose just the end fence, or just a little piece of your wing, and then be forced to decide whether you actually need to go pit for a new wing, which is really awesome watching the wing changes on the replay camera, or whether you're just going to stay out there with a little bit of ill handling and you will notice slight damage on the, no on the nose affecting the handling of the car. When you have severe crashes, big crashes, you will kill the car entirely and be forced to retire or use a flashback to go back in time and act like the crash never happened or reset the race altogether. 
And then finally, when it comes to damage, is the wheel-to-wheel -wheel or side-to-side -side contact, which is probably the most protected area in the entire game. Uh, it almost drives like it's a NASCAR. You can just pretty much smash into the side of the cars, and it doesn't really resemble Formula One in that sense, but the game is always quick to give you a penalty, and that kind of evens things out. Now let's move on to controller support. And much like the user interface, for PC users, this has always been an area of difficulty, whether you're talking about reverse mapping or not remembering your controls, or navigating through the menus. But F1 2020 is absolutely the best version of controller support that I've ever gotten out of this title. I actually am using three different devices, my wheel, a button box, and a pedal set. I was able to map everything instantly. It remembered everything. All the axes were in the right direction and I was able to get right to racing, which is a big step forward when it comes to controller support. And like I said earlier in the review, there still aren't enough force feedback adjustments, but the support for me was really good. However, Devin did experience a slightly different thing. With his direct drive wheel and a shifter plugged in, the game was constantly getting confused, and each time he restarted, he had to go back and reconfig everything which had always been my experiences until this version, so it might end up depending on your particular hardware. After 11 years of the F1 series, this is my favorite version yet. Granted, there are still a few issues in the sim, and a few of them date back many versions of the title and should have been fixed long ago. And we could ask for it to be more of a hardcore sim. Sure, granted, of course we could. However, I think Codemasters has done a really good job of walking that fine line between a playable game and a drivable sim. It is by far the most authentic Formula One driving experience, and it gives Formula One fans all of the glory of the 2020 season with the real cars, real tracks, real drivers of Formula One in a very brilliant way. The game is beautiful. It is really beautiful. And I am just entertained watching my replays. The career mode is deep, and the game offers instant action as well as many, many days of gameplay to get to the top. The game is challenging with AI abilities that will test your skills and rules that will keep you clean and require the most from players to succeed. For the Formula One fan who's also a gamer, this is a must-have. I mean, it's the only game out there where you can actually follow the real F1 schedule. When they're at Monaco, you can drive at Monaco. You can do it in the same car, same tracks and all that, and that's absolutely brilliant. I think it gives those fans a really good insight what it's like driving these incredible driving machines at these speeds at some of the hardest tracks on Earth. Now, for the hardcore sim racer, it has its place for some. I mean, if you're expecting it to be a hardcore sim, well, then don't bother. It's not. It is a Simcade title that is rooted in real physics, that is rooted in real feel, unless you experience the speeds of Formula One, but at a lower scale than your expectations are. But if, again, if you're a huge Formula One fan, this is the only sim where you're going to be able to drive at the exact same tracks that they are on any given Sunday and in the exact same cars and race as or against your heroes and I think it has a place for those people there and as a management software within a driving game I think it has a little room for people there as well. Now for me I know before I even fire it up that it's a Simcade title and I've actually not even gone in with any of those hardcore sim expectations I then look at it more as a need for playability. I look at it more for how will the masses really take to this, and then how much can it make us hardcore sim racers happy. And I have to tell you, all in all, this is my favorite version of the Codemasters F1 title yet. I think the relationship between them and Formula One has become more than just the licensing deal that it had always been for many years. Now, Formula One is actively somewhat involved, and I think that's paid off. I also think that having many years of the pro eSport behind us has paid off as well. Getting feedback from those drivers, driving it at that highest level, as close to the hardcore sim level as you can possibly get, and those guys giving that feedback has also benefited the title over the years and now made for what is the cleanest, best version of Formula One yet. 
And I'm not just trying to sugarcoat it, I'm just saying I take it for what it is and over the years they've cleaned it up a little bit here, a little bit there, they've refined it a little bit here, a little bit there, and I think all in all it just works and that makes for the best version of this title yet. If you played it in the past, you already have your opinions, and you can take all that to heart. It's this year's tracks, this year's cars, this year's liveries, and all that good stuff, and those refinements and improvements over the years, and I think that gives it a good place for what it is, the official game of Formula One. So I hope that tells you everything you need to know to know if this is a buy or a no buy. I mean, without VR, for a lot of people, it's going to be a no buy. And that's one of the things I'd really like to see implemented in the immediate future for this exact game. So that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can know when other reviews come out. Be sure to check us out at Twitch at Simpit Live so you'll know when we're reviewing a new game. We'll do it all live on Twitch and then we'll formulate our thoughts and come back with an edited review here at YouTube just like we've done for this one. So I hope you enjoyed the show, but that's going to do it for this one. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.